Okay, in the final of our five short videos focusing on some great data to use in your 2022 exams, I've just chosen a little selection of other key indicators I think are useful to have in your application toolbox. The first is the minimum wage. Things are changing. There's been quite a, a significant increase in the minimum wage that's due to kick in in April 2022, just a few weeks away. It's going to go up to £9.50 per hour, which is, I think, a sort of 6 or 7% increase. It's a significant rise. These are the new minimum wage rates per hour for by wage category. As you probably know, there are lower rates for apprenticeships and under 18s and uh, people aged between 18 and 20 and 21 to 22. So the increase to £9.50 per hour is for adult workers aged 23 and over, or there has been an increase in some of those other rates. Now, we're getting close to a £10 minimum wage. I think politically and economically is quite significant. Of course, many firms pay above the minimum wage, uh, partly to help uh, uh, recruitment and retention of workers uh, go back to uh, video uh, video one, wasn't it? We looked at labour uh, shortages and job vacancies. So the minimum wage is now £9.50 per hour. Clearly, that kind of increase is going to have quite a significant effect on labour costs, especially for smaller businesses uh, who might well be struggling in the context of rising uh, import costs, uh, fuel costs, rents, etc., uh, as the as the world economy moves into a period of inflation. My second indicator is actually a little duo are the exchange rates. Always good to know what's been happening to the exchange rate. Sterling dollar is trading at about $1, $1.130, $1 one35 It's relatively stable. Go back to 2008, of course, just before the global financial crisis, you could have got $2 to the pound. Britain's exchange rate fell sharply in the wake of the financial crisis in 2008. Stabilised a little bit, fell again in 2016 after the Brexit referendum fell below 140, uh, but has, has traded reasonably stably in, in the context of the UK at about 130, 135 for the last five years. Uh, keep in mind, of course, that the, the, the most international commodity prices are priced in dollars. So what happens to the UK dollar exchange rate is quite important. The pound has been depreciating a little bit against the dollar in the last few weeks and months, which means that the world price of the things we import coffee and cocoa and crude oil and gas, etc. Uh, that's gone up and adding, of course, to our inflationary pressure. Uh, the exchange rate against the euro is trading currently about one pound buys one euro 20. Again, go back to the, the uh, Brexit referendum 2016. There was a steep fall in the value of the pound against the euro from down from 140 close to 110. At the time, people were thinking, would we get to parity? Well, one pound buys one euro. Uh, then traded reasonably constant at about 110, 115. The pound again has this time has been appreciating against the euro in recent times. It's now up to 120. In part, I think, because expectations are that the Bank of England will probably raise interest rates a bit quicker than the European Central Bank. But also perhaps that uh, Eastern European countries in particular and Germany and Poland will be badly impacted by the, the war in Ukraine. And uh, obviously there are global consequences of that, but also consequences for the European Union in particular. So the pound is trading about one euro 20 at the moment. Two other indicators to finish. I'm sure you'll be familiar with what's happening to the world price of crude oil. It has increased steeply. The world price is now above $130 a barrel, all kinds of forecast. It will go up much higher than that. So much depends on whether the OPEC nations decide to ramp up production, not least in Saudi Arabia and UAE. But $130 a barrel is enough to take uh, the price of oil back to levels last seen in sort of 2010, 2011. Uh, very significant increase in oil prices. And of course, uh, linked with this is the steep increase in the price of gas. This is the, uh, the price of uh, natural gas in British pence per therm and an absolutely staggering rise in gas prices with perhaps more to come. Ofgem have increased the price cap, the energy price cap, by about £590, £600. That is going to be one enormous hit to the cost of living for millions of households in April 2022. And there may well be another increase in energy gas prices 
and energy bills in the latter part of 2022. So clearly, as you go into your exams, the, the cost of living crisis is should be, I think, uppermost in your thoughts. What are the causes? Critically, what are the consequences? Uh, and also, critically, also, what can governments, if anything, do to try and mitigate some of the effects of, of what we're seeing? These are big issues of the day. Now, the exams were written months ago, several moons ago, but have this information to hand. It's great context to be aware of. And the price of crude and oil and gas going up, but likewise food prices. Uh, there's been a huge surge in food prices. There's more to come, especially wheat. This chart shows the uh, United Nations um, uh, Global Food Price Index. It's risen to 140.7, and it's obviously... You can see what's happening. There's a fall during the first part of the pandemic, but since then, food price inflation or agflation, as it's known, is rising substantially. In part, of course, because of what is happening in Ukraine, uh, Russia and Ukraine are two of the world's biggest exporters of wheat. And uh, you can see, obviously, con the consequences of that, particularly in 2022, if Ukrainian farmers in the west of the country in particular are, un are unable to plant uh, the wheat this spring. This is going to add, again, significantly to food price inflation in the UK across a wide range of products. There we go. Five videos. I hope they've been useful. Just trying to give you an overview of where we are in the economy, some key stats. The exam, examiners love students who use their own knowledge. They use the data, the extracts and the tables and things. That's great. You need to do that. But also they have that, that little contextual knowledge, that little background information which can make such a great difference to your papers. So hopefully these five videos have been useful. Stay tuned, stay curious, stay safe, and see you sometime soon.